Today, we are going to delve into the fascinating world of computer hardware components. Understanding these components is crucial for your exams and will provide you with a solid foundation in computer science. Let's begin. The main components of a computer system can be categorized into input-output devices, memory types, storage devices, security measures, and different types of computers. Let's explore each of these components in detail. 1. Input-Output Devices Input-Output Devices are essential for interacting with the computer system. They allow us to input information and receive output in various forms. Some common input devices include keyboards, mice, monitors, printers, and specialized devices like scanners or touchscreens. When selecting input-output devices, we consider several factors. Firstly, port connectivity is important to ensure that the device can be connected to the computer system. Speed is another crucial factor as it determines how quickly the device can transfer data. Additionally, we look at the quality of output produced by the device and any specialized capabilities it may have. 2. Memory Types Memory types are vital for storing and retrieving data in a computer system. Let's explore the different types of memory. ROM, read-only memory ROM is non-volatile memory that stores permanent instructions or data. It retains information even when the computer is turned off. ROM is used to store firmware, such as the BIOS, basic input-output system, of a computer. RAM, random access memory RAM is volatile memory that provides temporary storage for data that the computer is actively using. It allows quick read and write operations, providing fast access to data. RAM is essential for running applications and multitasking. EEPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory EEPROM is a type of memory that can be erased and reprogrammed. However, it requires exposure to ultraviolet light to erase the data stored in it. EEPROM, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory EEPROM is similar to EEPROM but can be erased and reprogrammed electrically without the need for ultraviolet light. It is commonly used for storing small amounts of data that need to be retained even when the power is off. When selecting memory types, we consider characteristics such as speed, size, capacity, word size, the number of bits that can be accessed at once, and volatility, whether the data is retained when power is removed. 3. Storage Devices Storage devices are crucial for long-term data storage in a computer system. Here are some common types of storage devices. Hard disk drives, HDD, HDDs use magnetic storage to store data on rotating disks. They offer large storage capacities and are commonly used in desktop computers and servers. Solid state drives, SSD, SSDs use flash memory to store data. They are faster and more durable than HDDs, making them suitable for both desktop and laptop computers. Optical drives, optical drives, such as CD, DVD drives, use laser technology to read and write data on optical disks. They are commonly used for installing software or storing large amounts of data. Flash drives, flash drives, also known as USB drives or thumb drives, are portable storage devices that use flash memory. They are small, lightweight, and convenient for transferring data between computers. When selecting storage devices, we consider factors such as capacity, the amount of data it can store, access speed, how quickly data can be read or written, access method, sequential or random, and portability. 4. Security measures. Security measures are essential to protect the computer system from power surges and ensure uninterrupted operation. Some common security measures include Surge protectors Surge protectors safeguard the computer system by diverting excess electrical voltage during power surges or lightning strikes. Voltage reg Today, we will explore the fascinating topic of computer architecture. Understanding computer architecture is crucial for your exams as it provides insight into the basic building blocks of a computer system and how data is represented within it. Let's dive into the details. 1. Computer Architecture Computer architecture refers to the structure and organization of a computer system. 
It encompasses the hardware components, the design principles, and the interaction between hardware and software. By studying computer architecture, we gain a deeper understanding of how computers function and how data is processed. 2. Data representation. Data representation involves techniques and formats for representing information in a computer system. Let's explore some important concepts related to data representation. Truth tables and logic gates. Truth tables and logic gates are used to perform logical operations and manipulate data. Truth tables show the output of a logical operation based on all possible input combinations. Logic gates, such as AND, OR, and NOT gates, are electronic circuits that perform these logical operations. Flip-flops, registers, counters, multiplexers, encoders, and decoders. These are fundamental components used for storing and manipulating data within a computer system. Flip-flops are memory elements that can store a binary value, while registers are groups of flip-flops used for holding data temporarily. Counters are circuits that count and generate specific sequences of numbers. Multiplexers, encoders, and decoders are used for data selection, encoding, and decoding purposes, respectively. 3. Representation of data. Data in a computer system is represented in the form of bits, binary digits, and bytes, groups of 8 bits. Let's explore some important aspects of data representation. Number systems. We study different number systems, including the binary system, base 2, decimal system, base 10, octal system, base 8, and hexadecimal system, base 16. Each number system has its own advantages and applications in computer science. Fixed numbers. Fixed numbers are used to represent integers. We explore different representations such as signed magnitude, one's complement, and two's complement. These representations help us handle positive and negative numbers efficiently. Floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are used to represent real numbers with a fractional part. They are essential for scientific computations and complex calculations. We learn about the IEEE 754 standard for floating point representation, which defines the format and precision of these numbers. Character representation. In computer systems, characters are represented using character encoding schemes such as ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or Unicode. These schemes assign unique numeric codes to each character, allowing computers to handle text and symbols. Understanding data representation is crucial for efficient data manipulation, calculations, and communication within a computer system. It forms the basis for various computer science concepts, including programming and algorithms. By delving into computer architecture and data representation, you will gain a deeper understanding of how computers process and store data. This knowledge will be invaluable for your exams and lay a strong foundation for your future studies in computer science. In our computer science class today, we will delve into the exciting topic of computer organization. This subject is vital for your upcoming exams as it focuses on the main characteristics of a processor and the execution of instructions. Let's explore the details. 1. Computer Organization Computer organization deals with the structure and design of a computer system, specifically focusing on the processor and how instructions are executed. By studying computer organization, we gain insights into how the hardware components work together to perform various tasks. 2. The CPU and its components The CPU, Central Processing Unit, is the central component of a computer system. It performs the majority of the processing and executes instructions. The CPU consists of several essential components. Arithmetic logic unit, ALU The ALU performs arithmetic and logical operations, such as addition, subtraction, and OR, etc. It handles mathematical calculations and comparisons. Control unit, CU The CU manages and coordinates the activities of the CPU. It fetches instructions, decodes them, and controls the execution of instructions. Registers, registers are small, 
high-speed memory locations within the CPU. They store data and instructions that the CPU requires for immediate processing. Different types of registers, such as the program counter, instruction register, and general purpose registers, serve specific purposes in instruction execution. 3. Instruction formats. Instruction formats determine the structure and layout of instructions. We study different aspects of instruction formats, such as the number of addresses per instruction and whether instructions have fixed or variable lengths. These formats define how instructions are represented and processed by the CPU. 4. Types of instructions. Instructions can be categorized into different types based on their purposes. Some common types of instructions include Data manipulation instructions. These instructions perform arithmetic, logical, and data transfer operations on data stored in registers or memory. Control instructions. Control instructions determine the flow of execution in a program. They include branching instructions, conditional and unconditional jumps, and subroutine calls. Input-output instructions. Input-output instructions handle data transfer between the CPU and peripheral devices such as keyboards, monitors, and printers. 5. The instruction cycle. The instruction cycle is the process by which the CPU executes instructions. It involves three steps. Fetch, the CPU retrieves the next instruction from memory. Decode, the CPU interprets the fetched instruction and determines the operation to be performed. Execute, the CPU carries out the operation specified by the instruction. 6. Clock speed and cache memory. Clock speed refers to the frequency at which the CPU's internal clock generates pulses. It determines the number of instructions a processor can execute per second. A higher clock speed generally results in faster processing. Cache memory is a small, high-speed memory located inside the CPU. It stores frequently accessed instructions and data to provide faster access. Cache memory improves overall performance by reducing the time required to fetch instructions from main memory. Understanding computer organization is essential for comprehending how instructions are executed within a computer system. This knowledge will prove valuable in your exams and provide a strong foundation for your future studies in computer science. Today, we will explore the important skill of problem solving. Problem solving is a critical skill to have, not just in computer science but in many areas of life. It involves finding solutions to challenges or issues by following a systematic approach. Let's dive into the details. 1. Problem Solving Process The problem solving process consists of several stages that guide us through finding solutions effectively. Let's examine each stage in detail. Problem Definition This stage involves understanding and defining the problem clearly. It requires identifying the specific challenge or issue and determining the desired outcome. A well-defined problem sets the foundation for the rest of the problem-solving process. Problem analysis. In this stage, we break down the problem into smaller components and analyze its key aspects. We examine the available information, identify any patterns or relationships, and determine the root causes or factors contributing to the problem. Problem analysis helps us gain a deeper understanding of the problem and its underlying factors. Identifying and evaluating possible solutions. In this stage, we generate a range of potential solutions to the problem. We explore various alternatives and brainstorm creative ideas. It's important to consider multiple perspectives and approaches. Once we have a list of potential solutions, we evaluate their feasibility, advantages, and drawbacks. This evaluation helps us assess the suitability of each solution. Selecting and justifying the optimal solution. In this stage, we choose the best solution from the alternatives identified in the previous stage. The selection process involves considering specific criteria, such as effectiveness, efficiency, cost, and practicality. We compare the options and select the solution that best meets the desired outcome. It's important to provide justifications for the chosen solution, explaining why it is the most appropriate choice based on the criteria. Implementation and review. 
After selecting the optimal solution, we move forward with implementing it. This stage involves putting the chosen solution into action. It may require planning and organizing resources, coordinating with others, and executing the solution. Once the solution is implemented, we evaluate its effectiveness. We review the outcomes, assess whether the problem has been resolved satisfactorily, and identify any areas for improvement or adjustments. 2. Importance of Problem Solving Problem solving is a valuable skill in various aspects of life, including computer science. It helps us tackle complex challenges, make informed decisions, and find innovative solutions. In the field of computer science, problem solving is at the core of developing algorithms, writing code, and designing efficient systems. By following a systematic problem solving approach, we can enhance our analytical thinking, critical reasoning, and decision making abilities. These skills are essential for success in both academic and professional settings. Developing strong problem solving skills will not only benefit you in your exams but also equip you with a valuable skill set that can be applied to real world situations. So, embrace problem solving as an essential tool in your journey as computer scientists. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you engage in problem-solving activities, the more proficient you will become in finding effective solutions. Today, we will explore the fascinating world of algorithms. Algorithms play a crucial role in computer science and problem-solving. They are step-by-step -step procedures or sets of instructions designed to solve a problem efficiently. Let's delve into the details. 1. What is an algorithm? An algorithm is a problem-solving strategy that provides a systematic approach to solve a given problem. It consists of a series of well-defined steps or instructions that, when followed, lead to a solution. Algorithms serve as a blueprint for solving problems, and they can be applied to various domains, not just computer science. 2. Properties of well-designed algorithms Well-designed algorithms possess certain properties that make them effective and reliable. Let's explore these properties. General solution. A good algorithm provides a general solution that can be applied to a wide range of instances of the problem. It should not be specific to a single case but rather have a broader applicability. Clearly defined and unambiguous steps. The steps in an algorithm should be precisely defined and unambiguous. Each step should be clearly understood and executable without any confusion. Ambiguity in steps can lead to incorrect results or misunderstandings. Finite number of steps. An algorithm must have a finite number of steps. It should eventually terminate and provide a solution. Infinite loops or infinite recursion should be avoided in algorithm design. Flow of control. An algorithm should have a well-defined flow of control from one step to another. The sequence of steps should follow a logical progression ensuring that all necessary operations are performed. 3. Representing algorithms. Algorithms can be represented in different ways to communicate the problem-solving process effectively. Let's explore some common forms of algorithm representation. Narrative. Algorithms can be described using descriptive text or a narrative format. This involves explaining the steps in a clear and logical manner using natural language. Narrative representation is useful for explaining the algorithm verbally or in written form. Flowcharts. Flowcharts use visual symbols and arrows to represent the flow of control in an algorithm. Symbols such as rectangles, representing processes, diamonds, representing decisions or conditions, and arrows, representing the flow of control, are used to create a graphical representation of the algorithm. Flowcharts provide a visual understanding of the algorithm's structure and flow. Pseudocode. Pseudocode is a simplified programming language-like representation of an algorithm. It combines elements of natural language and programming syntax to describe the steps of an algorithm. Pseudocode is less formal than actual programming code and focuses on expressing the algorithm's logic clearly. It is a bridge between the narrative and programming languages, making it easier to understand and implement the algorithm in a specific programming language later. By utilizing narrative, flowcharts, and pseudocode, 
we can effectively communicate and share algorithms with others. Each representation has its advantages and can be chosen based on the context and intended audience. Understanding algorithms and their various representations is essential for effective problem solving and communication in computer science. Practice designing and analyzing algorithms to sharpen your skills and prepare for your exams. Remember, algorithms are powerful tools that will assist you throughout your journey as computer scientists. Today, we will explore the topic of logic development, which is a crucial aspect of computer science and problem solving. Logic development involves correcting algorithms, developing algorithms, understanding program logic, and analyzing algorithm output and correctness. Let's dive into the details. 1. Correcting algorithms from case problems. When working with case problems, it is common to encounter errors or mistakes in given algorithms. Correcting these algorithms involves identifying and rectifying the errors to ensure they function correctly. This process requires careful analysis and attention to detail. By understanding the problem requirements and identifying the flaws in the algorithm, we can make the necessary corrections to achieve the desired outcome. 2. Developing algorithms from case problems. Developing algorithms from scratch is another important skill in computer science. It involves creating algorithms based on the given problem requirements. This process requires a solid understanding of problem-solving techniques, logic, and programming concepts. By breaking down the problem into smaller steps, analyzing the requirements, and designing a logical sequence of instructions, we can develop effective algorithms to solve the problem at hand. 3. The logic of a computer program. The logic of a computer program refers to the sequence of steps and decision-making processes used to solve a problem. It involves organizing instructions in a logical and coherent manner to achieve the desired outcome. The logic of a program is defined by control structures, which are fundamental constructs in structured programming. 4. Control structures. Control structures determine the flow of execution in a program. They include Sequencing. Sequencing refers to executing instructions in a specific order. Instructions are executed one after another, following a predefined sequence. This ensures that each step is completed before moving on to the next. Selection. Selection involves making choices based on conditions. Conditional statements, such as if-else statements, allow the program to execute different sets of instructions based on whether certain conditions are met or not. Selection structures help the program make decisions and adapt its behavior accordingly. Iteration or repetition. Iteration or repetition involves repeating a process a fixed or variable number of times. Looping constructs, such as for loops and while loops, allow the program to execute a set of instructions repeatedly until a specific condition is met. Iteration structures are useful for performing repetitive tasks efficiently. 5. Determining output and correctness of an algorithm. After developing or correcting an algorithm, it is crucial to analyze its output and determine its correctness. This involves assessing whether the algorithm fulfills its stated objective and provides the expected result. The analysis can be done using narrative descriptions, flowcharts, or pseudocode representations of the algorithm. By carefully reviewing the algorithm's logic and evaluating its steps, we can determine if the algorithm is correct and produces the desired output. Understanding logic development is essential for effective problem solving and programming. It enables us to design algorithms, identify and correct errors, and assess the correctness of our solutions. By practicing logic development and analyzing algorithm output, you will strengthen your problem solving skills and be better prepared for your exams. Today, we will explore the fascinating world of programming paradigms. Programming paradigms are different approaches or styles of programming that define how we structure and organize our code. Understanding these paradigms is essential for becoming proficient in various programming languages and for developing applications suited to specific domains. Let's delve into the details. 1. What are programming paradigms? Programming paradigms are different ways of approaching and organizing code. 
They provide a set of principles and rules for designing and implementing software solutions. Each programming paradigm has its own characteristics, rules, and preferred methods of solving problems. 2. Common Programming Paradigms There are several common programming paradigms. Let's explore a few of them. Procedural or Imperative Paradigm In this paradigm, the focus is on a sequence of instructions that are executed in order. The program is structured around procedures or functions that manipulate data. The main emphasis is on how to perform tasks step by step. C and Pascal are examples of languages that follow the procedural paradigm. Object-oriented paradigm, object-oriented programming, OOP, is based on the concept of objects that encapsulate data and behavior. It emphasizes the organization of code into reusable objects, allowing for modular and extensible design. Key features of OOP include classes, objects, inheritance, and polymorphism. Java, C++, and Python are popular languages that support the object-oriented paradigm. Functional paradigm. Functional programming focuses on the evaluation of mathematical functions and avoids changing state and mutable data. It emphasizes immutability, pure functions, and higher-order functions. Functional languages provide powerful tools for working with lists, recursion, and transformations of data. Languages like Haskell, Lisp, and Scala are based on the functional paradigm. Declarative paradigm. Declarative programming focuses on expressing the desired result or goal rather than providing step-by-step -step instructions. It allows the programmer to specify what should be done, and the underlying system takes care of the how. SQL for database querying and Prolog for logic programming are examples of declarative languages. Other paradigms. There are additional programming paradigms, such as aspect-oriented programming, AOP, which focuses on separating cross-cutting concerns, and scripting languages, which provide a convenient way to automate tasks and perform quick prototyping. 3. Choosing the right paradigm. Each programming paradigm has its strengths and weaknesses, making it suitable for specific types of applications. For example, Procedural programming is suitable for small to medium-sized programs with straightforward logic and a focus on efficiency. Object-oriented programming is excellent for large-scale projects with complex interactions between objects and a need for modularity and reusability. Functional programming is well-suited for tasks involving complex data transformations, concurrency, or parallelism. Declarative programming is often used in database systems or applications where the emphasis is on specifying the desired results. The choice of programming paradigm depends on the requirements of the project and the problem at hand. Experienced programmers often combine multiple paradigms to leverage their strengths and create efficient and maintainable code. Understanding different programming paradigms will broaden your perspective as a programmer and equip you with the ability to choose the most appropriate approach for your projects. Practice programming in different paradigms to gain hands-on experience and prepare for your exams. Remember, each paradigm offers unique advantages and can greatly influence the design and functionality of your software solutions. Today, we will dive into the world of programming languages. Programming languages serve as a means for humans to communicate instructions to computers. They provide a way to write code that can be executed by machines. Let's explore the key aspects related to programming languages to help you prepare for your exams. 1. Different programming languages. There is a wide variety of programming languages available, each with its own purpose, syntax, and features. Some commonly used programming languages include C++. C++ is a powerful and versatile language known for its performance and efficiency. It is widely used for system programming, game development, and other applications that require low-level control. Java Java is a popular language known for its platform independence. It is used extensively for web and enterprise application development, Android app development, and more. Python Python is a high-level language known for its simplicity and readability. It is widely used in various domains, including web development, data analysis, artificial intelligence, and scientific computing. JavaScript 
JavaScript is primarily used for front-end web development. It enables interactive and dynamic features on websites and is also used in server-side scripting with Node.js. Ruby, Ruby is a flexible and expressive language known for its elegant syntax. It is often used for web development, scripting, and rapid prototyping. C Sharp, C Sharp, pronounced C Sharp, is a language developed by Microsoft. It is mainly used for developing Windows applications, game development with Unity, and building .NET based software solutions. These are just a few examples, and there are many more programming languages available, each designed to meet specific programming needs and requirements. 2. Program Translation Program translation is the process of converting high-level programming languages into a form that computers can understand and execute. High-level languages are designed to be easier for humans to read and write, while computers understand and execute code in machine language, which consists of binary instructions. The translation process can involve different tools and techniques, including assemblers, Assemblers convert assembly language, a low-level language, into machine code. Assembly language uses mnemonics to represent machine instructions, making it easier for programmers to work with. Compilers, compilers translate high-level programming languages into machine code. They perform a series of steps, including lexical analysis, parsing, semantic analysis, optimization, and code generation. Compilers produce an executable file that can be directly executed by the computer. Virtual machines, virtual machines, VMs, execute programs written in high-level languages. They provide a runtime environment that emulates a computer system, allowing the code to run on different platforms. Java Virtual Machine, JVM, and Common Language Runtime, CLR, used by .NET are examples of virtual machines. Interpreters, Interpreters read and execute high-level code line by line. They translate and execute each instruction on the fly, without producing an executable file. Interpreted languages, such as Python and JavaScript, use interpreters to run the code. The choice of translation method depends on factors such as performance requirements, platform compatibility, and development convenience.